Hi, this is James Ng with Old Capital, and today I'm here with Mr. John Krebs to talk about a new deal in Arlington. John, how's it going? Um, appreciate you jumping on today. Uh, maybe give a little bit of an intro on yourself, the firm, um, and then we'll jump into this new deal in Arlington. Sure. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, originally from Lubbock and moved to Dallas about seven and a half years ago, started working at Henry S. Miller, worked at Sperry Van Ness, and then my partner, Paul Yazbek and I started this company in 2018, the multifamily group. And we've been, you know, just kind of growing and trying to do deals ever since. How many guys uh, do you guys have across sort of multiple? I mean, I know you're, you're obviously here in Dallas, you got guys in Houston and San Antonio, all over the place, it seems like. Yeah, we're trying to, you know, grow in, in different markets. And so I think we're up to 14 now, 14 brokers. Uh, that's Oklahoma, Georgia, Arkansas. And uh, you mentioned Houston and DFW. Okay, that's perfect. All right. Um, so let's jump in to this deal, Oaks of Arlington. Um, I pulled up a map here, maybe give us sort of where it sits in the Metroplex and sort of the uh, demand drivers there? Sure. The, I guess, you know, big um, landmarks that are, that are right, are right there for DFW across the street. You've got, you know, Six Flags over Texas theme park, um, wet and wild, what it was called when I was growing up. Now it's uh, Hurricane Harbor. Uh, then of course the AT&T stadium where the Cowboys play and the new uh, Ranger Stadium and uh, Globe Life Park, all right there across Interstate 30. Uh, the property sits right across the street from a school, um, a junior high. Um, actually, one of one of our guys actually went to junior high there, and it's a nice neighborhood. There's some homes you can see um, from the property that are probably in the three fifty to four hundred thousand dollar range. The Household median income for the one mile, according to CoStar, is about 52,000. So strong area, lots of good uh, demand drivers you mentioned in the area and, you know, and, and a long-term owner. Yeah, so um, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll touch on this in a little bit, but I, I pulled up an aerial of the, of the property and I guess it was built or built in two phases really. So I guess this middle, part of the uh, complex was built in the 80s. And how many that's units right. was that? Do you remember, John? Sure, that, that's 65 units there. And, and it's got, you know, one in, uh, they're flats, but you know, two, two floors of flats There's 60, yeah, 65 of those. Okay, and then around the outside here, you have uh, more townhome style units with garages. And um, those were built in the 90s. 95, that's right. So the, the, the seller that we're representing acquired the property in 1995 and developed the 42 townhomes around that 65 flats there in the middle. And so you've got a total of 107 units. Okay, all right, perfect. So a little bit about the location here. I pulled up some pictures. Um, maybe give us a little bit of sort of what they've done I guess they've, they've owned it for a long time now. Um, what have they done on the interiors of the property and touch on any exterior upgrades? Sure. So one thing that's important is not only has it been owned by the same folks for, you know, 26 years, but it's, it's been the same manager, same management company. When you go out there, you can, you can tell these were long-term owners with, uh, you know, taking really good care of the property in mind. The units on the interiors are uh, all the same. Uh, black appliances. Now I have seen a mix of cabinets. Some I guess some have been painted. Some of the wood look. You see the pictures over here uh, on the right. With uh, there's there's a cabinet in the bathroom that's wood. There's a bathroom a cabinet in the kitchen that's been painted white. But black appliances throughout. They have dishwashers. They have microwaves. They've all got full size washer and dryer connections. You know, CapEx wise, the roofs are about 10, 11 years old. You know, the paint job is, is probably been sometime in the last 10 years too, you know, so it, it's not, 
it doesn't immediately need to be replaced, but people are definitely, you know, budgeting something for that. Um, you know, each of the townhome units has a garage, there's 42 garages. Some of them are direct access. Some of them are, uh, you know, indirect. They, they rent the garages for $85 a month unless your unit is attached to it. And then it's just your, the, the price of the rents increased by that amount. There's also, if you go back to the uh, aerial, there's some covered parking. You'll see there on the interior, right? Those shiny metal roofs, that's covered parking. There's actually some room to add that as well. And they get $50 a month for covered parking spots. Okay. All right, um, let's flip over. All right, so this is just some of the details um, on the property, I mean, it's got individual HVAC, individual water heaters, um, copper wiring. I, you talked about the connections in the units. Anything else um, that people should know about just sort of the physical construction of the property? Yeah, I should start off by saying this is, you know, to the best of our knowledge, buyers are advised to do their own due diligence on this. Of course. Uh, as far as this stuff goes here. But sorry, what was your, what was your question? I was thinking about that. Is there any... Uh, um, is there any particular um, things you want to point out on sort of the exterior sort of physical part of the deal? Well, they all have their own private balconies, which is nice. Or they see, you know, I think that, I think that they've all got that. Um, you know, I mentioned that they've all got individual washer and dryer connections, full size connections inside the units. Um, the pool area is really nice. They just got their pool permit from the city of Arlington. They're going to open up the pool soon. They get a premium for pool view units. Um, I think it's not much, you know, probably 15 or $20, but some of the units do get a uh, premium for a view. Generous floor plans, 911 square feet. You know, that's brought up by some, some very large, you know, those townhome units are pretty good size. Pretty good. All right, let's. Um, so yeah. I pulled up the the unit mix. So looks like we got ones and twos. You sort of separated them by the sort of 1980s flats and then the townhomes. Um, That's right. Any any commentary here on sort of where the rents are today versus um, sort of market rents? The the neat thing is if you go out there and tour it, the the regional manager will tell you that they are getting seventy five dollar unit. Uh, $75 rent bumps on renewals. So people's leases are coming up for renewal. They're telling them if you want to stay, it's going to be another 75 and people are renewing at that price. So they're pretty, the rents are pretty high at the top of the market for 1980s. If you compare it to the nineties and then some of the newer stuff that's being built, there is some room, but it's one of the nicer properties over there for, the 1980s so there those rents are at the top of of that you know of that market but right right down the street are 90s properties townhomes that are getting quite a bit of rent and also there's new construction right there that you know so i've been having a lot of conversations with folks about taking it to the next level with you know granite countertops uh you know a backsplash a different appliance package you know, and, and maybe making it fall a little bit closer to the new construction. So here we pulled up some rent comps of one bedrooms and two bedrooms from the OM. Um, I guess on these, on these comps, I mean, on the ones you're seeing, you know, maybe 1200 to 1250 and twos, even up to 1400. And so that's still pretty sizable gap to, to, to this property. Um, any additional comments on, on these? I mean, they're all sort of in that same sort of North Arlington pocket, right? Yeah, the, you know, the Heights, that's a, that 10,000, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, 1,035 square feet. That is a one bedroom townhome unit um, that they're asking rent is 1670. Um, so that's, you know, that's a night vest property there. Um, there's some other, uh, you know, Dalton is an 80s property that's that's been renovated. Um, and then, you know, another townhome property in Woodbridge. So, you know, we're, we're comparing, you know, the townhomes and, and some of the 90s product, but you can see that, you know, even even with those, there's a sizable, you know, uh, premium and a lot of, you know, opportunity for the next owner. 
All right, let's flip over to sort of the financials on the deal and sort of how, how the, we talked about the rental income, any other um, sort of either other income items or expenses that um, the new buyer could change up? One thing I forgot to mention to you before we, when we talked about this is we just got the uh, water conservation, uh, in, you know, proposals back. We got a couple of those and there should be about $30,000 worth of water conservation savings on this property. If you look um, at the utilities right underneath there, I've got the water and about sewer broken out. So, yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, uh, 800 bucks a unit, that's, um, you know, 70, 65, $70 per unit per month, uh, which is, you know, pretty strong um, or, or, you know, or pretty um, sizable when you talk about water costs. So I think there's some opportunity there. Uh, the payroll and admin expenses are high. You know, that's what kind of, you know, I've sold a lot of properties in my career for long time owners and you know, that's, that's something that I've noticed, noticed is, you know, when, when they have a long-term plan, they'll usually be a little heavy on their payroll and um, some of their administrative expenses. We think at least for, you know, where you come in with size in the debt and a, and a good borrower's budget, um, there's definitely some room there. And I think we found that the proceeds were favorable on this one. Yeah. So no, that's perfect. I mean, on for 107 units, you're sort of right in between maybe two people and three people, you know, I think definitely you, third party management is, is doable. And then also just depending on if you need more help leasing or with maintenance, you might have a part-time leasing or maintenance person on the property. Um, but the, you know, I think right now you guys are pretty much full. So I would probably toggle that between leasing and maintenance um, and probably just focus on maintenance at the time. Um, but do you have a whisper price on this deal yet, John? Yeah, we're whispering 16 million. It's a, it's a, about 150,000 a unit. Okay. All right. So, um, 16 million, we looked at it, um, sort of three ways or four ways here, actually, um, started with Freddie Mac and just started right down the middle. Um, uh, this deal is well occupied. So, um, you know, you could do a Freddie Mac conventional loan. And we're sizing it right at about 11.7 right now with about a 2.75 starting rate with three to four years IO. And just this week, Freddie um, is dropping the reserves. So you don't have to worry about code reserves right now. And then, so that has a 12 month lockout then a 1% prepay. So that's probably one of my favorite loans if you can go out and raise the amount of equity needed. Um, on Fannie Mae, 11.2 million, if you want just to sort of fix your rate and not have to worry about an interest rate cap or any of those things. Um, we're seeing about 325 to three and a half. If you want uh, maybe a step down prepay, you can do that on Fannie Mae as well, but you'll pay a little bit higher interest rate. Um, and then right now, as of today's recording, Fannie Mae has um, about six months PNI on their COVID reserves, but we see that going away um, in the near term. So by the time you sort of go to loan application and work through the process on this deal, it'll probably be down to zero. And, you know, we've, we've been getting waivers down to zero as well. And then the last two options really are your non-recourse bridge. And so we've been doing a lot of bridge loans recently, and these will do 75 to 80% of your purchase and then hundred percent of your rehab. So um, depending on your rehab plan, I think I put in just 5,000 a door um, for now. Um, you could be anywhere from 75 to 80% loan to cost on a floating rate um, bridge loan with full term IO and your all in sort of starting rate would probably be about 375 to 4%. And then you would have a 1% prepay and no, no COVID reserve or anything like that. So those would be your own different debt options right now. Sizes really well, sort of right in the middle of the fairway, sort of 80s, 90s product. So I think a lot of lenders would, would like to lend on this, on this property. Um, so that's it on the debt side. Any sort of uh, wrap up comments, John, and then uh, talk to us maybe if you have a call for offers date yet. Yeah, we're gonna do the call for offers June 15th and we'll be touring all next week and the following week. So, you know, get in touch with me and we'll set you up a time. It's a, it's a really nice property. You know, 
it's the oaks of Arlington and they've got, you know, live oaks, cedar oaks, red oaks. I like trees. And one thing I look for is, you know, how often have these trees been trimmed, you know, and you can just tell with this property that, that these oaks of Arlington have been really well taken care of. Um, you know, it's got some very nice, very nice trees on it and just a great property. I think this is one that people will enjoy touring and it's, it's neat. Anytime you get to see, um, an asset that's been, you know, stewarded along for 26 years, uh, right in the heart of the Metroplex. It's, it's, it's exciting. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to throw in a, um, so Gary Keller, who started Keller Williams in Austin, he said, uh, whenever he buys a property, he plants oak trees. And because that's one of the few things that you cannot like catch up with, right? You cannot add, and he says it adds a ton of value to these properties. So um, I, I, I completely forgot how they named it. So thank you for tying that in. And call for offers, once again, is uh, you're, you're looking sort of mid-June, right? June 15th. That's right. Yep. Okay. All right. Yep. That's perfect. I appreciate you coming on, John. Thanks for having uh, me. And um, we will see you out there. I'll probably be out there next week with you. Have a good weekend. Okay. That sounds right. good. Thanks, John.